East Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top-rated sportsbook. Make sure you download the app and use the promo code CHGO when you sign up. It's Doug Meyer, Ryan Herrera, and Cody Del Mendo. The CHGO Cubs podcast team, or at least a portion of it, which, by the way, with 100 days to go before opening day, that's not that far away, crazy, yeah. we are the number six ranked baseball podcast in America. Just so you know. I checked again that's, this morning. We're still number six. That's, Just that's so gigantic. you know. That's, that's huge. That's awesome. Just so everyone knows. We're not even a year old, and we're number six in America. Yeah. That, no, that, when you, when you send that in, or no, Herb sent that in yesterday into yeah. our, Herb from CHGO White Sox was, I guess, looking through the charts, SARS, and I was like, that is freaking awesome. So everyone that tunes in is. Well, so they're the reason. The, the chat yeah, and the downloads, that. they're the reason, right? Yes, like, 100%. To, oh, yeah. Chat, everyone who downloads and listens to the podcast, appreciate you. <laughs> Sean <laughs> says, we're coming for you, John Boy. I was going <laughs> to say, like, the fact that we're, like, in the conversation with John Boy for as long as John Boy's been, like, out there, like, I don't know, blows my mind. Well, and here's something else for it. Like, not to bang our, you know, our own chest here, but we, we are. Uh, <laughs> come see how good we look. Uh <laughs> I mean, the Cubs stink. They have yeah. not been very good. Like, right. I, I shouldn't say stink. The Cubs have been below average, right? They just have not been a very good team yeah. while we've been doing the podcast. Yeah. I mean, I can so, you could say for most of it, they stunk. For, yes. For a good majority of it, they stunk. And then, mm -hmm. yes, came, to came quote Big Z, we stink. <laughs> right. For a good portion, we stink. And stinks. came back a little bit to closer to just below average, you know? But yeah. the chat has always been positive. And as somebody pointed out during our uh, emergency podcast for the Dansby Swanson signing, you know, there was a time when we first started, we were getting 30 people for a post-game show. Yeah. And then to do the Dansby Swanson presser and you're like 650, 660, and it's going keeps going up, then you realize what the potential of what we're trying to do with Cubs fans is and could be. Yeah. So props to us for number, hitting number six before we uh, wrap Maybe up we're the new hit year. we the top five before Christmas. That would be nice. That would be fantastic. Yeah. No, that would, the, that would be, be nice. That's we can top five. We can can pass, you guys do that for us? We could totally pass the Braves one. Yeah, tell your friends. Go download it. Yeah. Even though you watch on YouTube, go don't go download it on the podcast <laughs> network, whichever one you use to. Well, those numbers helpful. are for Apple, so if you have an iPhone, just right, there you, right. Go. you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that's right. It's for Apple. So, but we're not there without Sean Caselli or mm -hmm. Michael Ra Culotta. Ravi's here. Ravi's here, here every show. Everyone. <laughs> Ravi. <laughs> everyone that's been here since day one, everyone that Robbie's maybe showing up for the first time today, you're all part of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of yeah, the names you see in the chat. So anyways, best. cool, and we appreciate you guys, and thank you very much. Now, now that we have Dansby Swanson, you guys, you want to start real quick with what Tyone was saying yesterday? You want to hit that at the top? Like, Yeah. We have, we have more press conferences coming. Uh, Cody Bellinger will speak uh, later today, which is Tuesday. Ryan will be checking that out, yeah. and then we're no, hoping no. we're hoping there's another one this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. right. For the, for the obvious, right? Yeah, we're, we're hoping there's another one this week yeah. before the holiday, um, um, before the snow. You yeah, like huh. what Tyone had to say? Yeah, I mean, listen, like I said this about the Contreras thing with the Cardinals, like he's going to do whatever it takes to get the fan base hyped up for him and stuff like that. And I wouldn't say that Tyone went on when. In, to that level of, of that, like, it's not like the Yankees, it's not like Yankees fans are, like, going to miss him that much. They just signed Carlos Rodon. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the things that I like the most that he said was just the, con like, the discussion about how he talked to, the, like, the he talked to the Cubs in person. The Cubs were the only team that came and actually met him in person. The fact that he talked to Craig Breslow for like two hours, supposed to be a thirty-minute conversation, turned mm -hmm. into two hours. Talked and it was about, just them two. Like it was, yeah. Like, that, and, he, yeah. and I think the biggest thing for sure was the fact that he still believes that there's untapped potential mm -hmm. that he can get to that mm -hmm. to that level that he believes he can get at, and he thinks the Cubs can help him do that. And that's right. That, that's like the key. that's that's. That goes into everything that we've talked about since we started doing this podcast about the Cubs pitching infrastructure and just how good it has become over these last couple years. So, yeah, I mean, when they, my reaction when they signed Tyone last week or two weeks ago, whatever it was, um, was that it's a solid signing but has high upside because mm -hmm. I believe the same thing. I think if with the – with the pitching infrastructure, I think Tommy Hadovy and company can help him get to that level that I feel like he can get back. Or even just, 
I mean, he was really good with Pittsburgh. He really was. It was. It was not like he was talked about a ton, but he he was almost a four war player for them one year for them. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. like I don't. I just think that there is a lot of upside with him, and the fact that he talked about the Cubs Cubs pitching infrastructure a ton and asked about it and the coaching and stuff like it really got me excited about him. Yeah, I mean, we you mentioned the untapped potential part, and. I mean, there's a reason he was the number two draft pick, you know, was that now 12 years ago, like in 2010, like he was seen as a very high upside prospect and, you know, he had a lot of injuries, obviously with the Pirates, like he, that his whole time with the Pirates was just injury after injury after injury. Like it was, and it was big ones, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so he hadn't had a lot of time, I guess, in the majors to really live up to that potential. Um, but he had, a, he had, he had good, you know, good years and definitely had a good year with the Yankees. And so when you when you bring a guy like that to the Cubs again, as we've talked about, he's probably not he's he's, he's not like an ace. He's not your number right. one like set it and forget it ace kind of guy. Um, but he's a guy who is a very solid pitcher. Um, you know, can probably go out there and get you a bunch of innings this year. And then he has the potential to be even better. I mean, he he. I say he could be probably a good number two on a competitive roster if he's you know pitching at his best. And this Cubs pitching infrastructure has shown that. Guys who've maybe not fizzled out or anything, but are are coming off maybe a couple bad years or down years, or they need something different to kind of reach that next gear. The Cubs pitching infrastructure has has done that mostly for relievers, right? Um, but you saw a guy like, Mike, like Marcus Stroman, you know, struggle to start off last year. They they changed things around and he had a really good second half. Um, so the Cubs infrastructure is is very good at taking what these guys do well, figuring out what they could do better, and and, and kind of working in, the, in those two directions simultaneously. Um, and so I'm I'm intrigued to see what they could do with a guy like James in town because he has the potential to be a very solid pitcher for this club. Mm-hmm. And, you're, and you're hoping what you're talking about, like improving guys and finding something that can bring them back, you're hoping something like that. And again, the word is hoping with Kyle Hendricks. Like you're hoping they're trying to increase – his velocity, okay, mm-hmm. like great if that works. Ninety nine, baby. Yeah, if if that works, fantastic. <laughs> but and and while you may not, he may not project necessarily as an ace. I know that I heard Ryan Dempster actually mention the word prior to his signing that he had that type of ceiling in him. The Cubs believed, and so I trust that analysis. I trust that even if he's not an ace, the Cubs have guys that can at least hover around that word. You know mm. what I mean? Like, yeah. you could see Justin Steele taking another step and showing you ace-type stuff mm-hmm. next season. Yeah. You could see Stroman stepping up from what he did in his first season with the Cubs and not going through COVID and all that stuff and taking that step and being the ace. You could see Tyone being that guy, finding the next gear and being an ace. So what they've done is add – more good baseball players. So, and again, those baseball players, as long as you have even the potential of being an ace, I like that possibility for where mm-hmm. the organization is right now. The one thing that I liked from his press conference, and we won't spend the whole podcast on Jameson Tyone, but I like the fact that he talked to Anthony Rizzo, <laughs> and Anthony Rizzo had great things to say and basically told him, listen, if you've got a chance to play for the Cubs, you got to take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and it was that's, him. That's from a, at that point, that's from a Yankees teammate saying it to him. Like, I, if you got that opportunity, you take it. And what I like about that is that I, I wasn't losing sleep over it, but I didn't like the way things ended with Rizzo. Yeah. No one did. Well, it, no, it seemed no, like fans, there was nobody like, did. Right? It seemed yeah. like there was some friction. As it does ended. seem like there's a little bit of friction. And if he's saying that, I know that the healing process has started. Yeah. And when his playing career is done, he'll be a guy that shows up at yeah, Cubs convention, and, got, and he should be. You also right. got a guy like like Scotty F. Ross, who you know had come up in 2021, so had about half the season in this this past year, got traded. Great mm-hmm. things to say. Trevor Williams was here for a half year, and you know he reached out to him as well. Uh, Tyone reached out to Trevor Williams as well, and he had great things to say, and this kind of goes back to you know uh, when Seiya Suzuki signed, when you Darvish mm-hmm. he reached out to you Darvish, who the Padres were a suitor for Seiya Suzuki at the time, uh, and he reached out to you Darvish about you know, about the Chicago Cubs, and you Darvish gave him a glowing review of the organization. Like that's if, if if nothing else works, you want to be able to build those kind of relationships with players who obviously aren't even on your team anymore. But when 
people approach them about joining the Cubs, like you, they still have positive things to say about it. Like, don't, if, if nothing else, you need to build those positive relationships and not burn bridges because – even if those guys may not, a guy like Anthony Rizzo is not on your team anymore. He's not helping you win anymore. He may still be a guy that he's respected enough that if he tells a player, hey, like, if the Cubs want you, that's a good deal, like, then, then people will listen to him. And that's what you want as an organization, that even the guys that leave the organization still talk highly right. about you. Well, again, the big thing related to that is the fact that he even found out that, they, that the Cubs were interested in yeah. him from Anthony Cubs Rizzo. Sources. So. To me, that says everything about anyone who's thought that Rizzo and the Cubs as an organization didn't, like, were, I guess, having friction or whatever. Like, perhaps at the deadline in 2021, yeah, there was some friction and some – he was obviously not happy about how things ended. Um, And I can sit here and I can be on his side on one way and thinking maybe the Cubs should have overpaid for him a little bit just because of what he meant to the organization – whether that's a good move or not, I don't know. Um, but on the other hand, the Cubs were in a position where making a move like that maybe wasn't the smartest idea. We can sit here and argue about that all we want, but I, again, I think that this that that tidbit that came from that that press conference shows that you know Rizzo is long. I think he's long moved on from what's happened, and and he didn't say anything negative about the Cubs whenever they went out to New York during the season, right? Mm-hmm. So no, he said the right um, things. Yeah, so I I mean, uh, but I, I this was know. a real sign. Yeah, this, this yeah. is not just the words. fact that he encouraged. He didn't have him, to say it. Yeah, yeah, the fact that he encouraged him to go to the Cubs, I think, is it's it's just comforting. Like, you know, like. It, because at the end can, of the day, can we like, finally move on. Like, can, yeah, I mean, can I've, we close the book I've, on that? I've Wait, moved on. Resign. I've <laughs> moved on. It's just more about like, not not you specifically, but just yeah. I think a lot of Cubs fans really, for the last year and a half, have really believed that the Cubs and Rizzo just don't have a good relationship anymore. And I think that that question was answered yesterday a little bit, at least a little bit. It has like someone. You have to at least see that and realize, okay, maybe it's not as bad as I thought. At yeah, least it seemed like it to me, as as far. And it also makes sense that, it, or it helps that Rizzo obviously landed in a good situation for him um, when they did deal. Whatever friction there may have been between him and the organization we when the trade deadline here. happened, right? Yeah, yeah. Wh- whatever friction there might have been a year and a half ago when that trade deadline, you know, when that trade went down, it seems like kind of let bygones be bygones. Like if Rizzo's mm-hmm. talking up, if there's any friction. And then Rizzo's talking up, or if there was any friction, and now Rizzo's talking up the Cubs to James and Tyon. Like I think, you can probably be pretty confident that friction is like died it's at not, this point. It's not easy when your employer says, "Now we're, we're going to move on," right? And this is the only franchise you've really, really played for. Like mm-hmm. I know Rizzo had other teams, but like this is where he made his name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that's that's not easy. Um, all right, let's play deal or no deal. Ooh, possible okay. guys that we could still add to this roster that the names are being floated out there right now. John Heyman saying possibility of Trey Mancini, who turns 31 in March, as your maybe your platoon guy or your first baseman. Well, um, well, outfield too, right? Yeah, yep, yep, can play some outfield. He's a he was comeback player of the year in 2021, coming off his cancer treatment. When he slashed 255, 326, 432, and hit 21 homers. Now, last year was not nearly as productive, right? But, and mm-hmm. when he was traded to the Astros, I think he was one for the postseason or something like that. But I just feel like if Mancini, if, if, if Mancini is the guy they do sign to play some first base for the Cubs, mm-hmm. don't let a small sample size like a postseason impact the way yeah. you feel about that signing right it's a it's, that's a small period in time a postseason mm-hmm. you know think of, think of the 07 and 08 cubs <laughs> a lot of guys didn't have any hits in those postseasons but that doesn't mean they weren't good players and weren't great for oh, like people, regular seasons people i remember the people in my twitter mentions that that were happy when the cubs traded rizzo just because he didn't hit that well in the postseason even though he has plenty of big hits in the postseason for the cubs so you know i i take postseason performance like very like it's very very minimal to me because you gotta you gotta get there you gotta get there right so to me it's all about what you're doing the regular season then hopefully you know you you get similar performance in the postseason but I mean I'm looking at Man City's regular season numbers right now 
Um, 2021 was good. It's not that far away. Based coming after a, a year off because of cancer, it was, right? It was good. It, let me COVID. put it this yeah. way. It was good enough for what you're looking at yeah, first base yeah. right now. Yeah, for like a platoon guy, um, at someone who, you know, is going into his age 31 season. Yeah, I mean, he had a 0.9 F4 last season. The slug was down a little bit, but he still hit 18. Yeah, homers. I mean, his he's projected for 2023, and again, these are projections. You really never know mm-hmm. what's going to happen. But about a 107 WRC plus, yeah. 1.2 F4. Uh, you know, slugging is projected to go back up a little bit from where it landed in 2022. 409. Yeah, I, I'm like, I'm curious. It intrigues me. It's a move that intrigues me. Um, he would probably make a good platoon with Matt Mervis, especially mm-hmm. if Mervis is up to start opening day, you know, kind of letting him acclimate to the major league game uh, on his own pace. What I'm, I mean, I just, I would need to see what the contract would be. Sure. Um, it can't be all more. The, that, you have to say it about all these deals. Yeah, like, it, the deal's crazy. No. I, I, don't, I don't know what, I, I have no idea what, like, a price range would be yeah, on neither. that. Um, if, two, if it's more than two years, that kind of turns me off a little bit to it. Like, a, a two-year contract feels like maybe what a Trey Mancini would go, because you would hope at that point, if you're the Cubs, you'd hope at that point Matt Mervis is ready to open, like, opening day to, to uh, game 162, ready to take first base every day at that point. Is it possible um, you may have to eat a year on a deal if, if everything works out for your guys? Yeah, but you also might like having that guy in your hip pocket after one season if he has kind of a bounce back year. Again, it takes me back to what I was saying yesterday about the David Ross versus Moise Salou. Just because you look at Mancini and say, well, he's probably had his best baseball. It's gone. Like I, It doesn't mean there isn't a mm-hmm. fit for him. And the same can be said for Miguel Montero, where his best years behind him, yes. But there, that role is on this team still. Like This team is still building, and we're still waiting for the prospects. So I don't have a problem if the deal is right. I, I'm not giving it a, a, a five-star signing. But if you if you mm-hmm. told me they signed him to a reasonable deal, I can I can I can get on board with that for three yeah. stars. And I mean I think the I think the reason that it, it it would be or it would look like a better deal like if you just signed him is like the first base options aren't great. I mean Alfonso Rivas had a good twenty twenty one when he was up, uh, but then he didn't, really didn't take control of that position last year. You know, got sent down for a while. Like it was it wasn't a good year for him to show that he could be part of that first base rotation. I think they'll still try, um, but it wasn't, you know, it's not because he had a great year in 2022 that he will. And then P.J. Higgins, uh, Patrick Wisdom are probably, like, your other possible first base options, especially in a platoon role. Um, I could probably see Wisdom a little more than than Higgins at this point, but... Yeah. um, (laughs) But then you still got to figure out third base. My point, like, what you're saying is, if you're given the option of returning with what you had last year and Higgins playing first, Wisdom playing a little first and Rivas playing a little first, that combo, or that combo plus adding Mancini to the mix with Mervis, well, I'm going with the Mancini-Mervis mix. Yeah, yeah. That's just right. Just my opinion. I'm mm-hmm. not saying there aren't better alternatives, potentially. Mm-hmm. We'll go through some. I I was looking at splits right now on Fangraphs, and against right-handed pitching last season, he had a one he had a 111 WRC plus, which is you know, I think pretty I read solid. his splits are kind of all over the place yeah, too, like well, over, over different know, versus, years, right? Versus They're kind of left-handed pitching. Um, he has an 88, mm-hmm. so like, which is weird because he's a right-handed hitter, right? So you, yeah. you figure they would be different, but it was bas- it's basically reversed. So, um, yeah, I mean the the numbers aren't too different, but if you're looking at just weighted runs created plus, like. I guess that's the one big difference there. But, again, like, I think all of us, all of us want to see Mervis be, like, become the next Rizzo type. Take it, yeah. But Mancini definitely can help him, help groom him, and that's what you need. You need a veteran first baseman that can be there to help help teach him how to be a major leaguer, all these things. And if it's on a one- or two-year deal, you, you roll with that. And if Mancini takes off, great. Yes. Like, great. Like, at least you're not going into next season with Mervis just being the guy and adding all that pressure on him to be the guy. Again, Rizzo wasn't great right away. It took him a few years to really find, uh, you know, find his way of being one of the best first basemen in the league, mm-hmm. or at least in the National League. And 
like we just can't go into next season with expectations of Mervis just being that. No. It's going to take some time. And there's going to be peaks and valleys. We saw it with the rookies last year. Say Suzuki started the season hot, right? And then he went through that cold stretch. And he got hurt. Then he came back, and the the ups and downs continued, right? Like that's just what you have to expect out of rookies. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, he's that's have, why you sign a guy like Mancini. Well, he's it's going to be rough hard. spots for yeah. sure. And here's a guy who was stage three cancer. If you're looking for somebody to mentor a young player coming up and saying, listen, don't get too high, don't get too low, this, this is what you're going to go through. Yep. Mm-hmm. What better example than a guy who's been successful at the major league level and also beat stage three cancer? Like, mm-hmm. you want to talk about having to face something. Yeah. Like, he, he's been there and done that. So, I, am I all in on the move? I saw somebody say, Van Graffs was saying, might be two for 16 was the prediction. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's a 100% yes move. I, I think it's somebody that's, okay to consider for sure right. now we should point out that our brendan miller is known as the pitch doctor he is but then he got in our slack channel and he starts throwing out we might have to change him to the hit doctor or the hits doctor too <laughs> because all of a sudden brendan starts throwing heat craft look at this thing he threw out i, can't I don't even know what that. to make of this. It on this it's TV. some here's what it is it's terrible <laughs> he threw this out it, it, it's so much information it's just like overload. It's like it's like when they gave me a division problem in you know in grade school. I just looked at it and went. Uh, it's when I they just asked wrote me to do algebra, I just wrote four. I just gave a number for four. Was my favorite it's answer. It's hilarious because like before we get into this, like if you look if you looked at what he threw into because me and him did that story the other day on Swanson. Yes. And there was a couple of things I like. I messaged him. I'm like, hey, like I just don't like this because I I have no idea what you're saying here, and if I don't understand it. I doubt the readers will understand. He's like, okay, let me fix a few things. And then he just took it all out. <laughs> like, it, it was, but that, that's where Brendan, that's where the Brennan and the graphs and the charts. And oh man, you love it because, because he loves throwing this stuff together. And, but then it's like, how about you explain it to us like we're five? Like, right. Like, so Niren is, Niren is simplifying this something saying Drury is good versus slider. So Brendan was all excited about Brandon Drury. Um, and saying that his isolated power with greater than 78% contact filtered by average or better chase rate, Brandon Drury was sixth in baseball behind Jordan Alvarez, Mookie Betts, Rizzo, Jose Ramirez, and Jose Altuve. And he also plays above average third base, second base, and outfield. So he's giving you some flexibility. I love the idea of him at third base. Yes, yes. Right? That That's... So now if you're talking Mancini versus Drury, maybe it's not an either or. First of all, you could put him at third and you could put Mancini at first and you could figure something out for wisdom. Or guy, wisdom becomes a trade chip or wisdom becomes depth or these guys become depth. A guy like this kind of gives me Mark DeRosa type vibes. A guy who can play I, all I over like, the field. If I had to pick yes, right now, I would say Drury would be my choice oh, yeah. number one. Of oh, the yeah. guys that I could fit the, in with the I Cubs. think the fan base would love this guy. I mean, again, he hit 28 homers last year, 2021 and 2020. Not great, but he also didn't – he wasn't healthy. He played 51 games in 2021 and only 21 of the 60 in 2020. Um, kind of showed s- some promise with Toronto in 2019 um, and even Arizona 2016-27, mm-hmm. He, you know, in his earlier years. The last season was far and away his best year of his Almost career. 30 bombs. Almost 30 bombs. Which they he had a need. 3.0 F4, um, 263, 320, 492, yeah. 123 WRC+. Yeah, plus. He had a great year last year. I know year. I'm a Del, uh, I'm a eye test, Del metrics guy, but those numbers tell me that he's pretty good at baseball. And I think he'd be willing to take a, you know, he's, 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 he's proved it for one year. So if he wants like a real multi-year deal, like, Maybe a four-year deal. I mean, Maybe it, yeah. you take a one-year or a two-year with, like, an opt-out after one year. It, it could honestly prove it be again. that. You know what I mean? It could honestly be a – I mean, I guess Cody Bellinger's in a different situation, but what if it's like, hey, I'm, I'm, he's, he's not getting the contracts that he wants, you know, takes that one with, like, a mutual or one with a player option or something like that. I, I could see that happening. Um, I, I the, the contracts are so weird, and sometimes yeah. they just, yeah. like, surprise the hell out of you <laughs> on, on what they actually get. Um, but I, I could see him signing for a shorter term, kind of like you said, shorter term, maybe an opt out early on that if he proves it again uh, over the next year, maybe even two, like he can get a better contract. I, I could see that happening. My yeah. one thing with him is just like 
and it's not like a knock against him. It's just like the fact that he's not a great defender, and I'm wondering how you see what the Cubs are trying to do, and it yeah. feels like they're trying to go like really heavy on, on pitching and defense. And so to but he was above average offense, at third, though. according to well, I mean, I get Brandon Miller, right? Like, I mean, he's not terrible. Yeah. Well, he's not terrible. And, just, and wisdom is the same thing. Like, wisdom, I thought, was pretty good early on defensively at third base for the Cubs. He made some nice plays. And then last year. Really fell off defensively. Kind of fell off the cliff. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, so that, Drury, it looks like, according to Fangrass, rated up pretty negatively almost across the board mm. uh, at third base last year. And it's only in 513 innings because he did move around the, the diamond a lot. But um, that's just if you're talking about him straight up at third base, that's a different story. Um, I don't know. I mean, he's a good player. I, he had a good year last year. He won. He was the All Star for the utility, uh, the utility position, right? Wasn't oh, really? He? I, I want to say he was. Well, I like those. I'm maybe I'm, not. Maybe I'm, I'm more willing to give him a multi. Or a silver multi year deal because of the flexibility, of the positions he can play. The power seems to be there, and that's a guy. No matter who comes up, you can kind of move him around in different spots, or you can. DH him, or you can yeah, and, and make it, him a utility and his, guy. It, it, that that, that, that is position's also. similar to what I was saying about Mervis, because it's like, well, some people might be thinking, well, what about Morrell? He came up and he he had he showed flashes, but he also showed that you know the strikeout rates can be alarming, and um, you know his defense at third wasn't exactly as good as it was at short or at second base, or maybe even center field, uh, based off the eye test. I don't know what it really is, Ryan. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think going into next season with Christopher Morell as your full time third baseman is the right move, or even Patrick Wisdom, or even if you platoon those two guys there, I don't think that's the right move. I think getting a guy like Drury to go with those three guys only benefits the team a little bit more. So look at Tom trying to Tom trying to check me. Silver Slugger utility. I did fix it. <laughs> I did fix myself. It was Silver Slugger for the utility position, which I always I always forgot that that was a thing that they were starting to give out awards for the utility guys, yeah. but. That shows you that that Brandon Jury does fit in that role pretty well, at least on the offensive side. Like you're you're looking for bats, you're looking for offense because you did add uh, a couple of really good defenders this uh, uh, off season. So if you're trying to go the a little bit the opposite way, add some more power, some more um, just overall better offense to the lineup, that's a good option. Yeah, Brandon Trev- Jury is a good option. Trevor D saying generally when guys play four positions is because they aren't good in any spot. LOL. I understand that thinking. It's a little bit older. It's it's more like my old baseball thinking. The game has right? changed. Uh, you could say that about Ben Zobris, but uh, he was a World Series MVP more yeah. than once. So like, he played that, the positions well enough. Chris that's Bryant, right. You may Chris not Bryant be a, was an All Star. Chris Bryant. You, know, you may not be a gold. Place. Chris Bryant may not have been a Gold Glover at third base, or Zobris may not have been a Gold Glover at second, but. They're good enough at that position, and they give you the flexibility to move around. And just baseball has – baseball's just gone that way more often than you see guys just – even even when you think about Nico Horner. Nico Horner almost could have won a gold glove, and now you're talking about him moving over and playing another position. Mm-hmm. That's, just, that's just the reality of the way baseball is right now. So I, I understand what he's saying in the chat, and I would have agreed 100% with it 10 years ago, but I can't say I agree with it 100% now because I think the game's changed. And then if you want to look at just the Cubs in general, I mean, that team in 16, 15, 16, and 17, they were all, you know, they had a bunch of guys you could play all over the field. You know what I mean? So clearly of anything related to those teams, the Cubs are trying to replicate that, maybe flipping it a little bit, going more uh, pitching and defense heavy. But, I mean – I don't know. I'm, you need players I'm, who can hit. <laughs> yeah, you that. need like some you, hitters, man. The Cubs pop. aren't going to be able to win every game one to zero. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, well, that—that's why you when know. you look at and and not trying to compare too much to 2016 because this team is not going to win the World Series next year. No, no matter who they add on the on the. Free I'm just talking about right how they're building but, it. But what I'm saying is is you look at that team. That team was built on pitching and defense. That team had great pitching and defense. But they also had guys who could hit the crap out of the ball like that. And that, that's why True. they were such a good overall team. And uh, the Cubs right now, again, are looking like they're building it, trying to build that depth on the defensive side and, you know, good depth defensively and pitching wise. But they're going to eventually need some guys who can hit the crap out of the ball <laughs> right. in the what lineup. A, right. And that's what that that I mean, Drury, I'm not saying he's a long term solution, but he is a guy who at least this past season hit the ball really well. Correct. And Brady, I'm not saying what that comment was was wrong. I'm just saying you have to look at it multiple ways. Like, I'm not saying the stats 
don't tell you that maybe he is below average at a lot of different positions. Just like we saw Morrell sort of struggle with moving around a little bit last year. I'm just saying don't put all of your eggs in that basket. Like, Mm -hmm. you have to be open to the idea that he brings some value in other ways. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, and I'm not serious about this, but perhaps maybe maybe, uh, Sergio Alcantara can be that guy who they just signed on a minor league deal that everyone in the chat is telling us about. (laughs) (laughs) Somebody in the chat just brought up the trade that I was pounding all last season to the White Sox. Moncada? Wis- wisdom for Moncada, and you put in another player with wisdom. Like, and the White Sox, you think the White Sox need- would eat some of that money? You think Jerry would eat some of that money? Cubs take, <laughs> Cubs take the flyer on Moncada. Maybe he's a bust. Maybe, maybe you find magic. Maybe they're the yeah. team that can figure him out, and you get wisdom, and we'll throw in some. They get the power that they need, but we'll, they're going to get we'll a lot of strikeouts. More. We'll throw in more, but they need guaranteed power. Listen, I would, I would, I'm not against going – getting a guy like that, on, take him on a flyer and see what happens, but I don't know if I want the Cubs to do it and take that entire contract considering how bad he was last year. He was it's bad. not our money, though. I agree, but like I just based what off if they being would do a fair for, trade. What if they would do it for Wisdom, Madrigal, and... <laughs> wisdom, Madrigal, and... Uh, a, a minor league McKintry? arm. McKinstry? McKinstry. Yeah, I don't know. You're, you're counting on Moncada to have a huge bounce back season. Come on. Let's make oh a deal. My God. <laughs> I Again, I – The deal money, I money them aside, last year was I, I wouldn't much. mind it. Money aside, I wouldn't mind it. But, I mean, at the same time, I'm like, whatever. <laughs> All right. Let's take a quick break. Uh, Green Ridge Farm is a Chicago local meat and cheese company offering you a better all-natural option. Makers of all-natural deli meat, sausages, and their famous meat sticks, perfect for tailgating, happy hour, and school lunches. These all-natural meat sticks are hardwood smoked for eight hours, 16 grams of protein per stick, making a perfect post-workout snack. Meat sticks come in chicken, black forest beef, flavors like jalapeno cheddar and spicy chili. If you haven't tried them yet, you don't know what you're missing. Delicious, because they're made from recipes generations in the making, and being all-natural, they deliver a fresh, flavorful alternative at snack time. You can always find them in the refrigeration section at Costco, Sam's Club, or your local Chicagoland grocery store. And right now, when you order any three meat products at GreenRidgeFarm.com, include a pack of meat sticks in your cart. Those meat sticks will be free simply by using the code CHGO at checkout. Green Ridge Farm, simply natural meat. Meanwhile, Game Time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports and concerts and shows. If you ever dreamed about sitting in a seat you never thought you could, 50-yard line, courtside, behind home plate, floor seats at your favorite concert, well, it's possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you never thought you could buy. You won't find better deals this season on Bulls and Blackhawks tickets created by the fans for the fans, guaranteeing the lowest price. If you love CHGO, you're going to love Game Time. It's the best way to support us buying your tickets through the link in the description. Join over 15 million people who have downloaded the Game Time app, score the best seats to all your favorite events. Ryan is heading off for the Cody Bellinger press conference. He is. Cody and I holding, holding down the fort with the great chat that's going here on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, so the next guy on the deal or no deal is a name that also has been popping up. I'm curious what the chat thinks about this, and that is the addition of Michael Conforto. Yeah, the news that came out yesterday that the Cubs were linked to him, along with the Marlins, Rockies, and I don't even know the other team. It doesn't matter. The Cubs can – the Cubs could definitely pay the guy more than any of those teams. Um, here's my thing about Conforto. Is that, like, I think that on a short-term deal, like a one- or two-year deal, I feel like it's it's fine. Um, but I still get the same vibe with him as I do Cody Bellinger. And how many flyers do you need, man? Like, I guess the only thing that's different is just, like, he didn't play last year because of injury. So yeah. if you're getting what you got in his previous years, great. Um, but whenever you're 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 going you're trying to add offense to a team that's very defensive and pitching oriented right now, like I don't know. I guess like it's not like you have to pay him a ton of money or anything, but I guess that's like the only thing that really worries me because like you don't I I you don't I don't think you really know what you're going to get out of the guy except that he's going to be very because motivated. The injury, right? Except Gary it, says the other team was was the Rangers that were the Rangers. favorites. Thank you, thank you. Here, so, yeah, like, do you, do you see where I'm coming from? I do, and, and, and here's a my... A lot of people are, like, for it. You know what I mean? 
I I like the player. Um, I don't like him more than I like Ian Happ in left field. So if you're telling me you're getting Conforto because you're trading Ian Happ, then I'm no deal. Yeah. I like Ian Happ. Same. I like what Ian Happ has shown, his progress. He's now consistently starting to build. I, I like that he's both sides. I like that he's a leader in the clubhouse. I like that he just won a gold glove. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're telling me it's Conforto or Hap, I'm, I'm sticking with Hap, even if that means we have to hear about extension talks. Now, if you tell me Conforto is a good enough hitter that you're willing to let him be your DH for a couple seasons at, while also filtering in and filling in in the outfield for guys, yeah, and you're keeping Hap, now I like the addition of Conforto. Same. That's, right? That's, like, that's the only way that I would like And I do I guess it doesn't nest like my my like first thought once I saw the tweet was like are the Cubs going to trade Ian Hap? But when you step aside and let it sink into you a little bit, I, it's it's not like they have to trade Ian Hap if they do that. It's just do you want to see Michael Conforto play center field? No, I'd rather see him play DH or corner outfield and that's why I automatically went to the right. Hap thinking, you know what I mean? I want what Gary says, DH and then spot starts for him since he can play all three outfield spots. Right. Again, yes, I'm okay with the spot starts. I'm okay with trying to keep guys fresh and not playing them mm-hmm. old school, you know, every single day in the outfield. I don't yeah. want guys to get, you know, the current baseball player mm-hmm. seems to need a little more time off. So I'm fine with that if, you, if that's what's going to keep guys healthy. Right. So in that way, I like him. I just don't like – the possibility I see in chats and on Twitter and in social media where I see people say, trade Hap, Conforto's your new left fielder. Yeah, I don't like Listen, that. Listen, there's way more question marks for me mm-hmm. about Conforto coming off a big injury where he missed a whole season than Absolutely. there are about Ian Hap, who just won a gold glove and has proven to be a guy that will do whatever it takes yeah. to make himself better, including at one point going to AAA. Yeah. It- on top of the fact that, you know, he's your guy. He's your guy that you is a homegrown guy. And I think a lot of people want to see him get extended. And there's there's good reason to extend him. There's obviously good reason to trade him, unrelated to the Conforto stuff. But it's kind of like... The, to me, you're trading Ian... The only reason you're trading Ian Happ is if you feel like there's no way... You're going to yeah. be able to re-sign him for or, what you think you can get him should be getting him for. If you did move him, you got you get him for a, a position that you are in need of right now, which is like catcher. So correct the the conversations people are having related to him going to Toronto for like a Jansen or or whoever. Like I understand, it just depends on what that deal turns out to be and how they replace Ian Happ if they were to do that. But based off what Jed Hoyer said that season-ending press conference about Ian Happ, like I think the Cubs want to extend him. They're just in the process of trying to add pieces to this team right now, and maybe they can get it done either before spring training or during spring training or something like that. That that's my optimistic outlook on it. I know it's hard to be optimistic when it comes to Cubs extension and homegrown players, but I mean. Signing Dansby Swanson was the signal that they're going to try and be a competitive team this year. Why would you trade Ian Happ unless you're getting a major player back that is a, a, that you have a, glow, a, a, a a hole at? You know what I mean? You can you can put a guy in left field. Like you got a prospect that can come up and play right. left field. Brennan Davis, uh, whenever that is, or whoever. Like the the Cubs can fill left field via free agency or on the farm this year. Catcher is is a, is a situation that's just kind of up in question. So if if you did trade him for a catcher like Jansen, Danny Jansen in Toronto, then I would find a way to understand it. But yeah, I mean, all the way related back to Conforto, though. Yeah, I think you still got to keep Hap if you did sign Conforto. Um, I don't want the one. I don't want the one or the other deal because yeah. also keep in mind for everybody that was anxious to have the Jason Hayward deal off the books, and I understand that. <laughs> it was time. Right. Also understand that he was one of the key leaders in the clubhouse. There, There is value to that. I don't know what the numerical value is to that if you're trying mm-hmm. to put a number on it. But leadership matters, especially when you're trying to build from the farm system a young franchise and build the next great team. 
Ian Happ has become that guy. Yeah. Ian, Ian Happ has become one, certainly one of those guys. Have Maybe Nico's an, a guy in that list too. There's other yeah. guys. Um, but Ian Happ is someone that for sure has a voice in that clubhouse that people listen to. Right. So, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how the Cubs, you know, fill out the rest of this roster. Like, I don't think the Cubs are going to go O for the rest of the offseason, but they they do have to they do <laughs> got to figure out right. what they're going to do with with catcher, and they do need to add one or two more bats at least. They do those two things, then then you can really start talking about maybe a, a potential playoff team next year. You know what I mean? But until then, like it's kind of like all right, you're going to sign Swanson and not do anything else. Why would you? Why would you sign Swanson? In a right. Way? You know what I mean? And so. he'll be you know as Gary saying too in the chat. Yes. We hope that Dansby Swanson is also a leader in the clubhouse, right. but you know that Ian Happ is, mm -hmm. and you, you also want to have somebody that's already been in the farm system right. be a, but I understand an example, right? And I understand people who want to trade Happ or be open to it because his value has never been higher. Like selling high on him right now makes sense, um, but just, not giving up not giving up uh, on Ian Happ makes a lot of sense right now I, too. I agree. That's why it's a very interesting and tough situation. I think for Jed Hoyer here. But I think we have we've might have thrown out some numbers ourselves. I mean, based off what we saw Ben Attendee get from the White Sox, I think that you can give a guy like Ian Happ five years, 85, and feel okay about it. Yeah, I, I don't know what the right number is. I, I will say that Ian Happ's value has gone oh, yeah. <laughs> as you see this offseason. That's for, yeah, sure. for I'm, sure. I'm sure he's pretty happy that uh, that free agency period is coming yeah. because if nothing else, it's a great bargaining chip. For sure. Um, so did you see – Fangraph's zip, zips projections came out. I did, and I'm going to be real with you, Stuck. You get excited about this? No, I don't get excited about these <laughs> things. I really don't. I bet the chat's got a lot of people that get excited about it. <laughs> um, I will say that we went back, Kevin and I went back and looked, and last year the zips projections for the Cubs as a team we're pretty spot on, right? Like the description had them as a mid seventies win team, right? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mid seventies, uh, mid to high seventies win team is constructed. Could be competitive in a good year. Don't see the teams necessarily done making improvements. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, and a lot of these, some of these wars were a little bit low, but yeah. overall, but the, the overall was team the production was was pretty right. Now I have a, I tend to believe what a. Zip's prediction prediction would be more than I do the Pakoda rankings or whatever Pakoda projections, <laughs> which is I I don't know if I buy if you remember last year we were one of the first podcasts we were doing Pakoda had the Cubs finishing behind the Reds the and Reds Pirates. and yeah. Pirates at one or or maybe it was just one of them it was maybe it was it, the well, Reds. hold on it was one of them yeah. they had them third place. And they ended up finishing 74 and 88. They said 72 wins in a fourth place finish behind the Reds. Yeah. They okay, thought well, the, the Reds, Reds would be better. The Reds lost 100 games. So yeah. Yeah. Bite me, Pakoda. <laughs> <laughs> Zips, on, Zips is a little bit better. Now, third base, they have – this is one area where you can see this adjusting. Third base, they're giving the Cubs a 1.8 war. All right. But third base, currently, they have Morrell, Wisdom, McKinstry. We don't know that that's who's going to play third base, third base for this team yet. Right now, Swanson a four point seven WAR, Horner a three point four WAR. I think that's low. I think Nico's going to be higher than a three point four WAR next year at second base. Yeah, and then at first base you have a zero point seven WAR with Rivas, Mervis, Wisdom. That's the group I was talking about where I said, okay, if you can at least add Mancini to this group, it it only helps the position. Like I'm not saying yeah. he's you know. Right, going to solve your prob all your problems, but adding helps that. So I can see that at first and third base, with free agents still out there and the potential of what Mervis could be or might be, that there are ways or for what Morrell might be again in his second season, there are ways for this to go up. Yeah. So if they're as right as they have been in the past – I like that at least at first and third, you know there are possibilities for this team to go up. I couldn't – can you show me that again? I don't know if I can see it finely enough on this. What do they have, say, a Suzuki at? Suzuki's at two a 2.7, yeah. 
two seven WAR. See, and I like the possibility that he could be higher than that too. Yeah, if he I, plays a I don't, healthy season, I yeah. don't want to put too much pressure or too much faith in that he's going to really, you know, be take and, a huge step. And, and but and I he, think it's way more likely than people think. Yeah, and even Ian Happ at two and a half is low. Seems low based off what he did last year. He's an All Star Gold Glove winner. Year. Yeah, and going into a walk year, like I think. The the highest ceiling you can get out of Ian Happy this year could be a four war, so anywhere in the middle I think is fair, right? So right. like a three three point two war I think is something we can all maybe hope or expect for. Two point five is a little low for me though. App was a two point eight F war last year. In left he field. was a two point eight last 2.8. year. That's lower than I thought. I thought he was at least a three I, war player last I year. I would I would I'll put it if I had to make my draft kings prediction i'll put him at at least a three war for this season yeah i'm sorry he's projected to be a 2.8 war player this year he was a three and a half war yeah player last i was gonna say, say I at, least was at least a three and a half. so i i would i well, would this graph it says 2.5 i so. believe he can not only repeat what he did last season i think he's continuing to get better mm-hmm. i could see ian happ easily being a four war guy next year yeah easily yeah uh, this is, I believe, this is F War. Is this F War? Brady's asking in the chat. Yes, yeah. Fangraphs War. Yes, Fangraphs yeah. War. Okay. Um, yeah. so, and then sorry, also F-war. like Bellinger, Morel, two point four F War. I mean, who knows? Who knows? I mean, I don't know even how they. I don't even know how they came up with that projection, considering like you just don't really know what you can get out of either one of them. It could go. It could skyrocket. You know what I mean? Or it could just. It could be worse than that. We <laughs> should have. We I mean? should have done this. Maybe we'll do another podcast. The Pakoda, or we'll do the Fangraphs Zips projections, and then we'll do the CHGO predictions <laughs> <laughs> and see how close they are for each each position and each play. But let's yeah. let's wait until we get a roster. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like what looks like an actual roster or real lineup. The yeah. one thing about this is it does show that their top three starters. They're showing a lot of confidence in the the top half of the rotation is yeah. going to be strong. And I, I think they should, right? They should, right. yeah. Tyone, Stroman, Steele. Yeah. Wisniewski being a point four is the only one that's super jarring to me on this list. Everything else I can kind of see, but I think Wisniewski is going to be pretty damn good. I, I, the, the point well, we four think is that, he, but he's young. You know, I see why young. they're doing it because he's – He might not get a lot of starts. He's, yeah. And he's young. We just don't you – know, Even Kyle Hendricks at 1.3 is kind of low, but you just don't know if he's going to be healthy. But I understand why I understand why it's low. I don't understand why mm. you'd be dropping Ian Happ from what he did last year. Yeah, I agree. Especially again in a walk year. So right. Yeah. No. I. I, I don't know. I. Uh, again, I don't look into these and use them to. The only time I've ever used these projections to get mad was when I think it was like 2018 <laughs> or 2019. Pakoda projected the Cubs to win 79 games. Yes. This is this yeah. is back when they were still like in the golden era. Yes. And, and it like was... and like I remember that projection coming out and seeing 79 wins. Mm-hmm. I think it was 2019 and they ended up winning 84 and missing the playoffs. So, I guess they were kind of right in a way, but I remember being so mad about that. Uh, but yeah, that, that, I that's mean, the only time that I've ever like reacted to these things and taken them seriously. I think Pakota comes out in like right before the season. Yeah, I think they, they wait do. through like spring training and then the Pakota projections then come out. I if I <laughs> remember, Jack I think, RS. Yeah, I believe it's like February, March. It's somewhere around there. I can't exactly remember. Yeah, Jack RS. Uh, now, what does D War for the Cubs look like? Dell metrics. <laughs> it's a good question. CHGO War. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I can't answer that question. <laughs> we don't math, guys. There's no math come back. We allow There's we no mathing. We count on a lot of you in the in the <laughs> chat, in the live shows, and Ryan for the mathing, <laughs> and Brendan, and Brendan certainly for the mathing. Yeah, uh, me and Luke, we sit here and we're no, we're talking about donuts, and long division problem, and I just <laughs> uh, steam yeah. comes out of my ears and yeah. I pass out. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chicago, you've already got the best coverage for your favorite team, so get fitted in the best sports gear around. FOCO has you covered from Soldier Field to the living room, north side, south side, hoodies, slippers, signs, bobbleheads, everything in between. You can get decked out like tomorrow with apparel from the leader in sports, merch, and collectibles, FOCO. If you're looking for that perfect gift for the football fan in your life, FOCO's got you covered with hoodies to fight that Lake Michigan breeze. 
Do they have down coats? Because I think we may need those pretty soon more than just a hoodie. Check out FOCO.com to click the link in the description below for all your non-presale items. Use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. By the way, if you didn't notice, Ryan, when he was here, we were we were wearing the matching hoodies. Oh. Varsity jackets. This yeah. came in the mail for me today. Really? New yeah. merch? New merch. This I was, saw you're giving away merch on the I Twitter. I am giving away merch. All what a man is, of the people. Yeah. Cody. Wow. You, you just got to go like my tweet and make sure you're following me on Twitter. I did. I'm in the drawing. <laughs> got a shot. Do I have? Can That's I just fair. tell you now that you're that I'm probably not going to buy you that a shirt? It, that if you, if you pull my name, you're not going to give me. You're not going to buy me a shirt. I'm going to pick someone else because I want to. I want to. I want to give out to the people who support the show. All right. But <laughs> now again, if I won, I'd probably order like an extra small just so I get a real form fit, you know, so you guys could really see dad bod in its finest. Oh, baby. Oh, my All God. All right, so I'm not going to win. But, you know, if you follow, you should be following Cody on Twitter. You got a shot at a free shirt. All I got to do is like the tweet. All right. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, so uh, you you can, I can give whoever you are, whoever I give the shirt to, you know, next time we have like a tailgate or something, you can wear that shirt. Um, and if you come out and hang out with us, you might see our, our, our cornhole bowls or our, our bag set, as I, as I like to call them. But Chi Town custom cornhole they they made they make our sets and uh they're sick if you come out to our tailgates you've seen them um chi town custom cornhole the number one cornhole provider for chicagoland and illinois since 2007 our signature box style design can be digitally printed covered in vinyl and painted our cornhole boards come with built-in drink holders recessed in on the back LEDs that light up on the hole and exterior handles for easy carrying and handcrafted scorekeepers. Veteran owned and operated. Shout out to my guy, Tom. We can ship anywhere and offer local pickups, specializing in corporate designs for your company's next marketing or social event, wedding gifts and gifts for all occasions, and especially for tailgaters and backyard barbecues. Go check out their website, ChiTownCornhole.com, and make sure to follow them on Instagram at Chi-Town Custom Cornhole Boards. They're also on Twitter as well. I follow them. Great, great account. They always tag me whenever they tweet out the, the uh, Illini boards. So, shout out to Tom. Great yeah, dude. shout out to Tom. Met him at the last tailgate we had and uh, had a good time. We actually played bags, and he, he mm-hmm. was, uh, let's just say, a ringer. There's a reason he's... Uh, Got a bags company. Mm-hmm. You're real good at it, too. Brady says Cody Bellinger in his press conference says there's not much selling about Wrigley Field. The organization sells <laughs> itself. Well, that's a good way to start your Cubs tenure, I'd say. So, anyways. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll, I'm, Ryan going, I'm looking for forward. Yeah. Ryan's going to have an article, all chgo.com, yeah. and I'm sure he'll have all the great quotes in there, and we can talk more about it tomorrow. Um, but I did want to, before we go, mention that I saw on Twitter from Joe Doyle. Ooh, he says the, Joy he Joy says Joy. the Cubs are the favorites to sign consensus number one player in the international free agency draft period, Dominican shortstop Fernando Cruz, who is described as a plus athlete, a possible five tool guy. I believe only sixteen years old. Like I watched the video <laughs> that he put with this clip. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen. First of all, video. I like the swing. Yeah, the swing is real sweet. For a 16-year-old kid, if that's what he is. He's got that Javi Baez leg Yes. Kick. I mean, okay. Here's, here's what I like about this, if this is happening. Number one, if he is the number one consensus guy, I like that they are, hey, you got Swanson. Now you start to start Christian Henry. You start building guys at the, at the best position where you find the best players in baseball most of the time, right? Yeah. Like, find us good baseball players. I don't know if he'll ever get there, but if you get him, I'm all in, specifically because I think Fernando Cruz is a cool name for a shortstop. Yeah. We should take this clip and send it straight to the Red Sox and then ask for Rafael Devers. That's that's my, <laughs> that's get my idea. That's my idea. Hey, they might be in on Like, that's the, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it wouldn't be just him, but that's, I mean – it, it is, might be Christian Hernandez and him, and I'd still be okay, way okay with that. And again, then somebody else and somebody else. It's, it's great to see that they're being able to build through the system the way that they are, especially with a guy adding Christian Hernandez in recent years now, potentially this guy. You love to see it. You love to see it. So, 
And only really old people in this chat will know what I'm talking about when I say, Fernando, you look marvelous. That's an old Saturday Night Lights kid. Anyways, <laughs> uh, we got a super chat. Is this a dollar ninety nine? Yes, PS five dat mm-hmm. lie. Dollar ninety nine. He says Wesneski will be our best starter and future ace. Listen, I, I think that I think that there's high, high upside. I don't know if he'll be our future ace, but I do think he can be a at peak, maybe a number two or number three guy. Not next season, but within the next five years, I think he can reach that level. And if and if he blows that out of proportion, then uh, you can say I was wrong. But of all the young guys that they have that are, like, basically rookies next year, he's, like, the one guy that I'm, like, I'd be okay if they put him in the rotation. But their rotation's pretty much full right now, so if there's an injury, yeah. he'd be the first guy that would be, like, he deserves a start. He's like great if, in spring if, training. If, if Kyle Hendricks gets, gets hurt again, give me Wesneski. Or if you have, the, like, the – the Miley slow, st- like yeah. guys in spring training aren't ready. All that stuff happens. Uh, Brady says, be right back. I knew what BRB meant. He <laughs> says, I'm going to go ask my grandpa whatever that just was. I told you it was an old reference. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean it wasn't a good one. Yeah. Fernando, like F, near it says F Cruz. F, be a good F nickname. Cruz. F. Cruz, there you go. I like that. F and Cruz. <laughs> F and Cruz. You might change F War to just F Cruz uh. ratings. Anyways, I don't know. I like the idea. Anytime you tell me more good young players coming our way. Oh, yeah. I'm up for that. Absolutely. That's. I mean, I just think that the Cubs are continuing to just load up their system, man. So De La Cruz knew stuff. it was Billy Crystal. Thank you. See? Shout out. You have people out there that know what I'm talking Shout about out. still. Steel, Jack says steel, still the ace. I, that's what I was saying at the beginning of the podcast. No reason not I like to the, it. I like that on a team that is still building, mm-hmm. sure, it's great to have the guy you know as the absolute ace. But I like that you have three guys right now that you could envision being ace-like stuff, which means mm-hmm. you have three guys that are probably – Good to very good pitchers. Yeah. At, at the very least, you know you've built the depth and quality starting pitching when you're mm-hmm. talking about, well, this guy could be our ace or this guy could be our ace. And, yes, it goes back to what was we were talking about earlier in the podcast as well. Like, well, if he's not the ace, there's a reason he's not the ace because there's flaws. Yes, but good players are what you're trying to accumulate. Yeah. And I think they are on the right track. Justin still definitely looks like he might have the highest ceiling right now based off what we saw last year, but – you know, whenever, like what you just said with all these other guys, like, who knows? Like, who knows? You would have told me this po- at this point last year, if you would have said Justin Steele is going to be our ace going into possible ace going into 2023. I'd have given you the side eye and been like, Even what kind I, of crazy train are you on right now? Like, yeah, last year I was just all about giving how, Steele the it, opportunity. You know what, what happens? I mean? Yeah. And he took it and excelled in it, especially after June. So, yeah. I think if there's anyone that I feel like Justin Steele going into this year as compared to last year going into a year, if that makes any sense what I just said, mm-hmm. Wesneski would be that guy for me. Yes. That's his, that could take that same type he, of jump. Yeah, I think he's the one that really can. However, after and this goes back to Tyon in his press conference, he mentioned Justin Steele – and Keegan Thompson as, like, guys that people haven't heard about, necessarily heard about around the league, but have a ton of potential to be great. So, I, you know, I can't forget about Keegan Thompson. That guy was really impressive last year, too. I just – it's going to be interesting to see how the Cubs use him. I just think he's he might be their most versatile pitcher on the staff. So, we'll see. I mean, it's exciting. That's I think if there's anything that I'm, like, sitting here on December – what is it, 20th? Yeah, happy payday. Um, here on December 20th with months to go before spring training, it's I can't watch or I can't wait to watch this pitching staff and see how it develops over the summer because I think as much confidence we have in it, I still think there's a lot of question in it because at this point it feels like as good as that staff can be is how far the Cubs will go. Right. You know what I mean? By the way, is is this? Can we confirm what um, I'm, I'm, they're saying I'm, in the chat that Correa's press conference, uh, according to postponed. the Associated Press, the San Francisco Giants postponed a news conference to introduce Carlos Correa after a medical concern 
rows during the All Star Shortstops physical. Wow, Can you that's kid, let me, wild. That's that's like big news. Uh, that's all big I, time. We may have more on that tomorrow, but all I'll say is if that if he were the guys the Cubs had just dumped all that money, like tried to sign, and they had missed out then because the other guys are now off the board. Yeah. Ooh, this there'd be a lot of fire going on in this podcast. A lot of fire. We'll see what happens. Well, have, honestly, has, I hope has it's he already signed? He hasn't fine. signed the contract yet. If they're still doing no, the it's probably. I'm assuming it's pending that. Yeah, I, yeah. Most so he'd still. It's, it's definitely. You know, it'd still be unsigned. But my point would be that if it were something serious enough that they would look at that contract, well, yeah, the hesitation is not a good thing necessarily. That's for sure. But I agree. I hope he's okay because he's a yes. good player. I like to watch him. Yeah, yeah. You definitely hope that he's okay. That said, we're down with Dansby now. Dansby. Down with Dansby. Did, or the Dansby Cubs or die. Give a one-year prove-it deal at third you know, base. Nobody else wants him for thirteen. You'd like we'll to play one third. Prove-it deal. <laughs> <laughs> one-year one year prove-it deal to play third. How do you like that, Correa? Yeah, there you go. We Sounds can be like the twins uh, this year to go with it. You know what I mean? Uh, all right, we'll do this tomorrow again at one twenty. <laughs> Thank you uh, to everybody in the chat. Another good time, and uh, we appreciate you watching the number six ranked baseball podcast in America. Number six. Number six. Number That's six. Right. Baby. There it is. One more time. Number six. Don't let the facts get in the way of a good story, except right the fact there. that this is F E or F A C T S. And we are coming for the John Boy boys. Thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top rated sports book. Download the app and use the promo code CHGO when you sign up. And don't forget, always fly the W.